Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly video where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. First up this week is a quick update from Reventlo. They've been working on a bunch of different 3D printed projects and this post is just talking about the release dates for some of them. The N64 Junior shells are something that I've talked a lot about. They are 3D printed replacement cases for the N64 and those are finally going to be on sale Tuesday, December 13th. Next is this 3D printed GameCube top shell. This is something that I've seen before, but they mentioned that they're going to be releasing them in January. This is pretty interesting because if you see on the right side there, there is an SD card mount. So this is supposed to be an SD card extension for the GC loader. So if you look at the video here, they're gonna take off the top shell and you can see that they the CD drive, um, actual the whole mechanism for the CD drive, I believe, is gone, and it's replaced with a fan. You don't really need the disk drive uh, CD tray flip up thing because there won't be one because it's using a GC loader. But still, this is pretty cool, and I'm sure you'll be able to get it in a bunch of different colors to customize your GameCube. And lastly, they mentioned that they were working on restocking the analog pocket grips. This is something that I definitely would probably check out if I had an analog pocket. All the colors should be in stock by the time that you watch this video. Next, we have an interesting project from Todd Gill. This is a two and a half to three and a half inch hard drive conversion platform thingy. As you can see here, it would be really helpful for the original Xbox if you wanted to use one of these SATA to IDE adapters. That way you can use I guess you could use an SSD if you wanted to, or you can use like a laptop style hard drive. But you know, as the price of SSDs goes down, I think it's a pretty wise investment to start using SSDs instead of hard drives if you have a console or something that you just want to have for the rest of your life, throw an SSD in there and it probably will last you the rest of your life. Anyways, this adapter thing is pretty simple. You just screw in your SSD or laptop hard drive from the bottom, and then there are screws that come in from the side of the original Xbox to kind of secure this whole thing. So pretty interesting, and I bet the Todd is going to be selling these if you don't own a 3D printer and you can't make one of these for yourself. Next, we have a cool project from Zaxor. This is a Sega Genesis Model 1 relief board, at least that's what it says, and I know it's kind of hard to see in the pictures, but when you're doing the Sega Genesis triple bypass in a Model 1, you have to lift the RGB pins off of the VDP here, and they're just kind of free floating. You're supposed to solder wires to them to go up to the triple bypass board. But as you can see in this picture, Zaxor had to repair somebody's Genesis after they bent one of those pins off. So this board, the, the relief board that you see underneath here, is designed to have those pins kind of rest on top of it. And then you solder, I guess, like magnet wire or something, some really thin gauge wire to these pads in the bottom right here. And then on the bottom left, you have bigger pads that you can use your normal sized ribbon wire to solder over to the triple bypass board. I did have one question though, and that is how does this actually mount to the Genesis board? Is it just double-sided tape down? Or is there like solder points where this actually solders in place somewhere? Anyways, pretty cool project and the Gerber files that you need to create one yourself are available in this GitHub page. Next, we have another mysterious project from Jeff Chen. This time it is the Famicom expansion port switcher mod. A while back, Jeff had released this twin diamond adapter thing that plugs into the expansion slot on the side of the twin Famicom so that you don't have to use the hardwired controllers. You can use whatever uh, Super Nintendo or NES controllers that you wanted to put in the side there. But over the months, he's been talking about that there's some sort of limitation to the Famicom in some games, like they're not compatible with this thing. And I've been watching him craft this on Twitter. He's been posting pictures about where he's gonna try to hide this little switch here inside of the twin Famicom. So let's head over to the GitHub and see if we can find some more information about this. Okay, so it looks like there's two different options, internal merge and external stock. Toggling to the left will merge the inputs into the internal controller lines and toggling to the right will revert the console back to its stock state. So I guess that means that the controller inputs on the expansion port may not be compatible with all games. And so this toggle will let you sort of shove those expansion port uh, controller lines into the original stock controller lines. I've been meaning to get around to modding my twin Famicom. You can kind of see it in the uh, cabinet right back there. And I definitely want to put a twin diamond into that. So eventually I'll probably need to head down the road of needing to install this in my own twin Famicom. Okay, a little bit of a warning. I don't really know that much about the PC engine. However, it looks like Will's console mods is working on a bunch of mods for the PC engine coming, I guess, uh, early next year or so. But they did post an interesting PC engine mod the other day, and that is this huge kind of ribbon cable thing. There wasn't a lot of information in that tweet, but then I noticed that they had a listing here on their website for sale. So let's see if we can get any details about what that is here. Okay, so it looks like this base kit is a PC Engine slash Core Graphics 1 and 2 
ribbon cable replacement. If you open up a PC Engine, there's this old looking ribbon cable that's like hard soldered on both the console itself and then like the hue card slot on the other end. But apparently those are pretty brittle and over time that those can just snap off, I guess. So this mod here is strictly a way to repair that ribbon cable. You kind of take off the old ribbon cable, you solder off these two QSBs on either side, and then you can just use a more modern flat flex cable to go between them and basically fix that issue. But then there's a note here that says in the future, they will be releasing a small add-on board that goes in between this that will be a region-free mod for the PC Engine. So that's pretty interesting. And that makes sense if we look at the original picture, how there is a piece in the middle with a switch. So you have both of those ends of the mod that we just took a look at. And then in the middle here, you have another piece that kind of intercepts those two flex cables. And there's a sw toggle switch there, I guess, that so you can switch the region. So pretty interesting mods from Will, and I'm really excited to see where this is gonna go in the next year. Now, speaking of mods that I don't know that much about, for the big story tonight, I wanted to look at this interesting tweet from the Mod Shop. Apparently the boards for the Executor 3 control panel have been cloned. Now, I don't know that much about the X3 original Xbox mod. I know that is a mod chip by Team Executor. And I know that the X3CP or X3 control panel is a set of mods that go onto the face of the original Xbox. So there is an LCD on the right side here, and then there is a bunch of buttons on the left that must do some functionality. And then there's some normal looking USB ports in the bottom. This was a kit that you could get to add additional functionality to that X3 mod chip. Well, anyways, the X3CP boards themselves, which are the PCBs that were behind this faceplate, have been cloned. So it's a whole bunch of different boards, there is some kind of a bank switch board, a controller to USB board, that must be the USB ports in the bottom there. The LED board, I think, is a board that goes behind the button in the center of the Xbox. Or maybe that's the reset eject adapter board. Yeah, I don't have one of those original mods, so I don't really know what everything is. Yeah, so I'm not sure what all this stuff does, but apparently it makes that faceplate work. The real reason I thought this post was interesting, not like the cloned boards are that interesting. If you don't have an X3CP, you kind of can't really use those boards. They don't fit in the original Xbox's uh, front plate. But the mod shop mentioned that there was a faceplate STL, so a 3D printing file for the actual faceplate itself. I did happen to find a couple of different projects. This one here is on Colts 3D, and there's another one on Thingiverse. Somebody had taken a 3D scan of the original X3CP faceplate thing. So this isn't really everything that you need to get this up and running. I don't know if the cloned X3CP boards include an LCD or whatever, but you might get most of the way there, right? So you have replacement buttons for the reset uh, button and thing in the middle. The board behind will populate the buttons on the left side over here. And maybe there's those USB ports are mounted onto those boards somehow. Now you might say, why the heck are you talking about this? This by itself is not really that useful. Well, Make Megahertz mentioned while they were announcing a bunch of the stuff for the Project Stellar mod chip for the original Xbox, that they might have compatibility with existing older mod screens. So maybe something like the X3CP might be compatible with Project Stellar in the future. So I think it would be really awesome if, you know, if you wanted to 3D print your own faceplate, get those reproduction X3CP PCBs and kind of somehow get those to work with Project Stellar and add some functionality. I think it'd be really cool. I like the look of these faceplates a lot. I like the look of the LCD screen and I'm sure it would be helpful to have USB ports in the front there. So make megahertz if you're watching, maybe you can make this X3CP and Project Stellar integration happen for me. That's it for this week, but check out this video if you want some updates on the upcoming TurboGrafx EverDrive Pro. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.